Um, before we get started, I think we had a question from online. Shannon, do you want to go ahead and uh, tell us what we have? Yes, this is David. And David's question is, there are two sections of invoice notes, as I see it, one printable and one non-printable. I understand the space constraints on the printable, but we keep more notes than the 255 characters allowed. Is there any way to expand the character limit on non-printable invoice notes? Okay. And what I would actually say is I would actually say flex grid and make it transparent. You can add as mm. many notes as you wanted to, okay? And we haven't even talked about the transparency, but basically if we assign, say we create an invoice and we max out the internal notes, okay, that's there and it's searchable on our invoice. If I wanted to, I could technically add, 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 like, um, flex grid and make it transparent. I can show you how to do that really quick and then we'll kind of jump back in. But, um, Here's a small demo on how I would answer that question, okay? We're going to say start the cart, and I'm going to go ahead and let it be my area. I'm going to say start the cart. We're going to quickly just do some consulting, and we're going to say 285, just like a simple little invoice. Whatever you wanted to do for your invoice, that's fine. We'll go ahead and choose a client, and I know we have a couple in here. Let's go ahead and do the clowns. We'll grab it. We'll assign it to the cart. So here's what he's talking about right here. So in cart mode, we have non-printing and printable. Okay? This does not show, but is searchable. What he's talking about is right here. This is a max of 255 characters. Okay? Um, this printable notes, this does show. So if I go check out on this particular invoice, if I'm just going to put account, I just wanted to show you kind of where the pieces are at. Okay, so here's the invoice. Here's the, the printable notes are right there. In order to actually see the other ones, if I hit edit name, here are the non-printable notes that are served. <laughs> okay. So technically, we have an invoice right now. It's number 39. And I'm just going to show you this right here. So if I'm on 39, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I need a 50 million more notes on this invoice. Watch this. I'm going to go more options, and I'm going to say... Uh, add a new flex grid tie-in. And what it does is I'm not going to worry about anything else. I'm going right to the bottom. Skip everything, skip everything, skip everything. Okay. Um, more and more notes. Whatever you want. Like literally. Blah, 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 blah. Another 255. Watch this. This is your key. Transparent. Add a tie-in. So what happens right here is basically as I added that tie-in, so if I scroll down to the bottom of the invoice, you can't see it, but guess what? It's technically there. Watch this. Let me see the other quick screen notes I have. If you could add and add and add and add and add, it doesn't make a bit of difference. So you can literally come in, same thing, pop down to the bottom, transparent. You know, literally, you just keep going and going and going, and add the tie-in. So at this point, I've got two extra 255, 255, 255, you just keep adding that and that. But if you look at my invoice, it's non-printing, which is kind of what they were hoping, but it's technically still there. I now have two extra flex grid tie-ins that have notes and notes and notes and notes and notes. Okay? So that's a, way, that's a way to use the transparency of the flex grid. So we're not using any of those other files. We're just saying transparent, slam in your notes. And so as many as they wanted to do, literally, you can have paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of, especially if it's internal notes. That's kind of interesting that there's a lot of internal notes. Um, I'm not sure why, and it doesn't even matter, but that's how I would kind of solve that problem. Uh, ask if that answers the question. He I said, was just doing a small demo, but I mean, you could literally, like, how many do you want to add? <laughs> like, there's no limit. So as soon as you say one to many, what we actually do in the in the designing phase, we go like this, a numeric one, and then we put infinity to kind of symbolize a one to many. Because it could be a one to one, it could be a one to two, it could be a one to X, Y, Z. You know, like if, like if you put infinity because it's like, okay, we allow you to expand. And that's actually a huge piece of like what we do with everything is built on one to many relationships. What it does is it locks us in. Um, if you're okay, and I know that I kind of want to do a little bit more introduction, but I'm kind of playing where we're headed. This is a small graphic we've designed, but I wanted to show you something. I'm holding a muffin tin, okay? So this is what we call static, okay? Check this out. 
I only have a certain number of columns, I only have a certain number of rows. Okay, this is called static. That looks like a lot of options. It's not content, okay? But what happens is, is imagine if I only needed one extra piece of the building, and this was my model. I would put one little button in there, and then I would have to send it on its way, okay? Oh, wow, I've got a big one. I've got five. One, two, three, four, five. Send it on its way. Do you see how it's carrying extra weight every single time? This is a static model. Basically, you have to kind of say, what's the max somebody would use, and how is that going to work? However, if I go into a model similar to this, where I have a couple of plates and cups, watch how we can play this game, okay? Say if we wanted to create a new invoice, so I'll just kind of create a simple little invoice here. I've got a plate and a cup. I've got the invoice, it's number 39, okay? I have one little line item on there, not big deal, it's fake, it was two hours of consulting. Oh my goodness, I needed to add some extra flex for the notes, okay? Okay, send that on its way. You see how it's so flexible? Like, you can literally build whatever you want to build, and it just kind of allows you to do some stuff. These little standard cups are the different pieces that we can actually add. So on the invoice that he was just talking, just write the same thing. Here's literally what he had. Let me get my marker out so you can kind of see what I'm doing. We went like this. He needed a main and a main. And the main contained the location, the salesperson, the total amount, and it's able to hold multiple other pieces. This is kind of like, this is a two-way piece. This is the main, okay? Then if you have one line item. We have consultants for two hours at 85 bucks a piece, okay? Payments, we have one, we put it on account. That's basically the other little piece that we had. System history, it did report a history. It said, hey, Brandon created this at 9 something a.m. That's behind the scenes. You didn't need to see that. Flex script tie-ins, we added two. Boom, boom. Okay. And basically, does that make sense how we kind of did everything? We tied it also to a customer. Okay. So this is how we start playing with these objects and items. The piece that I just did, we didn't do any photo scans, there's no custom documents, and there was no other content. But that is literally the invoice that I just created right this second that I built it in an uh, object-oriented model. The only thing that was different is this particular flex grid right here had two instead of zero or whatever. Like it's not required, but instead of using a muffin tail where like, hey, this is all we're going to allow, this is very heavy, is what we call it for like database terminology. But if we're able to build and stack, then we can technically do anything we want to do. So, um, I might just throw back and forth uh, during the day today, from the muffin tip and the plates, but if you have a question, please ask me, and I'll re-demo it to kind of show it to you, like how it is object-oriented. It'll actually kind of help you understand some of what's going on. Awesome, that was a great question. So Brandon, the, so Thank you. what I, what I picture the flex could be is like, you know, uh, what the, the old, um, uh, what are those called? Right, the, right, right on a piece of plastic, and it would show against the, the wall or the screen. Oh, okay, like a transparency. Like a transparency. So a flex screen is like extra transparencies that can go on top of the original model, but then can be taken out or whatever if you don't want to see them. Correct. All we did right here is we just said, this right here, visible equals transparent. So they're physically attached. They're literally objects that are attached. But if I come here, I can actually tell it, hey, you know, do I want to see this or do I not want to see it? Um, so I'm going to just go back to the printable version of this particular invoice to show you once again. So I'm on a printable invoice, number 39. Here's the special relationship to the clown. Here's my main. This whole piece up here is my main, okay? That's like kind of that one little cup in the plate. It holds my values, who's my salesperson. Etc. Etc. Here's my one little teeny line item. It has a quantity of two. Here's my one little teeny payment. And then below here, you can't see them, but this is where my flex grid was. And what I did was I basically went here and I said, view the standalone, and it showed me how many I actually had. Because I made them transparent, if I didn't, they would physically show up underneath the invoice. Watch this. I'm going to make a non-transparent one just so you can kind of see it, okay? So I'm not going to make it transparent. I'm going to make it visible, and I'm say, this should show up. So when I add it, this will be the third piece of flex grid I added to this invoice. If I come down to the bottom, all of a sudden it shows up, okay? Because I didn't make it transparent or not. But so you can you can kind of dictate it and whatever.
there's a whole other setting we haven't even talked about in there. There's one that's called admin. So like, say you were adding something, but you didn't want anybody else to, <laughs> to see it, but it's very important to you. Transparent, admin, go. So all of a sudden, you have to have the admin permission over that level. You would have to have the admin invoice permission in order even to see that, that flex script. Even though it exists, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to even hide it doesn't it? a little level further. But the flex grid is very, very powerful. But that would be my answer to that particular question. So the visible, you could put, and maybe that's what this, uh, the guy's getting to, is you could put in your warranty information, your disclaimer about the product, like you're buying dangerous fireworks, and okay. maybe we saw it on the So, so what, I would, what I would recommend is that is technically what I would call a disclaimer. Or if you needed a super long one, like really detailed like a detail. contract. What I would recommend you do is you, you contact us and you say, I need a custom document that I need to assign to an invoice. Watch this. I'm going to switch back to this one here. Check this guy out right here. Mm -hmm. Custom documents. Okay. So if I have a five-page disclaimer on something that's going to shock you or electrocute you yeah, or your lawyer wrote whatever, it. Whatever, right? whatever, whatever. Okay. So what I would do is I would technically go like this. I have a single object and the contract actually exists in the background. We'll tie it in for you. And then if you need it or need to print it out or you need us to populate some data towards it, piece of cake. That's what we call a custom document. As a note, we basically, here's how we quote this, 100 bucks per custom document, okay? Unless it's like, <laughs> like if we have a kind of simple document and it's 100 bucks. If it's what we call a complex document, and most people can be able to tell, wow, I've got 75 fields I've got to fill out. And da -da 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 -da. That probably sounds like a complicated document versus like name, address, what's your invoice amount, maybe what are your line items. That's a piece of cake versus like, ooh. But that is where we would add that to it. And so all of a sudden, you would just go to the invoice and you'd go, oh, sweet. Yeah, I want to do this. Do, do you want to see how custom documents work? Can, can you give us an example of like a custom document that's been used in a business? Sure, like sure, sure. Um, so watch this. We're going to come into Atlas and we'll go do a custom document. So we started in the trailer industry and the vehicle industry. Guess what? You have to have custom documents constantly. Let me show you. We're going to switch worlds and I'm going to actually go in here to the Morningstar Texas. This is kind of an older one. It used to be one of the parent childs of the Atlas organization. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into some sold inventory and I'm just going to go see if I can find some. Let's see if we can go back to uh, Let's go to 2009 in July. Go get it. I'm not going to specify any other things. Here's a whole bunch of trailers that were technically sold. Okay, so I'm actually going to go to a specific unit. This is a Texas Bragg um, item. Its stock number is 7116. Okay, uh, up here basically there's a little link that's called paperwork. This will not show up unless you have custom documents assigned. But as soon as you do, if I click on it. Here's some custom documents that were technically assigned to this particular unit. Okay? And so basically what I wanted to do, say I wanted to actually see a, a thing called a Texas 130U. I can click on this. What it does is it basically populates it into a PDF document. Okay? And I'm just going to go ahead and save it. You can literally name it whatever you want it to. We'll just do this and then I'll say open. And then what happens is, what's going on is this particular stock unit and all of the sales information, we're virtually populating it right into the um, piece of the puzzle. Looks like I stepped away from it for a second. It might still be thinking. Oh, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So basically, look at all this information that we pulled out of this particular sale. Okay. So this one here is even, I would kind of consider it kind of between it. Uh, simple and between uh, starting to get into a more advanced one, but we're pulling invoice information. We're pulling some different settings. Like basically, this allows the person to do this, and then they just go file print. They take it to the county assessor or whoever they need to do, and all of a sudden, they're just doing applications for title work. Yeah, that's great. So this is a, a full document where we have the lines and all the kind of stuff. We actually have some people who have already printed this structure, and all they want to do is just overlay the information on top piece cake. Watch this. I'm just going to close this particular document and I'm going to say only data. Okay. This is going to look a little different. It's probably going to still prompt me to save it. We'll just say sure, whatever. Go ahead. And I'll say open it. And what this one's going to actually do is basically you can see how this is just the data. Okay. And so 
this is going to overlay over a pre-printed place, okay? But we can play in whatever level. This is just PDF. It could be physically a big old long, the lawyer writ that wrote this five, you know, five page doc and you need to sign here, 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 here. No problem. That's just what we call custom documentation. It literally plays along this level right here in the custom documents, okay? So we can, okay, so what we do right here um, on this particular PDF, if we go down to custom documents, just to kind of give you an idea, the answer is yes, okay? These are custom documents that get assigned to the main player. These could be PDFs, Excel, Word, whatever. These must be assigned by an administrator. What we do is we actually go through the back end and we say, oh, this world needs this document. It's already uploaded onto our server. Let's make that tie. And so the person doesn't have to use it, but it's already associated with that group. So I'm going to show you what level we associate things with on that. Okay? So we're clear down here at the group level. We tie a custom document to, let's say that this yellow one was stock units, and we had those two different things, the Texas 130U and the data only Texas 130U. So I would tie two documents to stock units. Now, when we get down to the individual levels, I may or may not need that. So if I'm selling a topper, I may not need that Texas 130U. However, if I'm selling a trailer, I might. So that from the individual level within that group, I might be pulling from that. Once again, it makes it dynamic. Okay, that's how that kind of works. Perfect. That's, that's a sample of a custom document. We have some banks that actually, on their invoices, that will assign it to an invoice. Or say you have a customer and they come in and you want them to sign a disclaimer even before you do service with them. Like, it's not even tied to an invoice. That would be tied to a customer. Okay? So we can tie it to any of our main application players. There are 12. And if you're okay, I'd like to review that with you just for a second. Um, I'm going to actually jump out of the Morningstar site and go back to the world that we were playing so that we're all in there together. Oop, my bad. And I'm actually going to go to the FlexGrid tie-in homepage because it has a great little uh, graphic that shows you the main 12 players. This, I can do custom documents for balance sheets. I can do custom documents for customers. I can do invoices, quotes, users. Like a user, check this out. What if you actually wanted HR stuff for your users, okay? I need your I-9s, I need this, I need this, I need, you know, whatever. Here's our contract. Did you, did you go through the user manual and all this kind of stuff, or whatever it is? You can get a physical thing. You can either scan some stuff to it or like, I mean, basically what we're trying to do is like, here's what we consider our main groups or our players, and then how do you want them to play? So that's kind of what goes on there. Awesome. That was a great question, and then we kind of diverged a little bit. But hopefully it'll kind of show you some of the flexibility of what you can do. Um, Shannon, any other questions on that from online? No, he said that was perfect though. Thanks for answering. Okay, perfect, perfect.